Shalom. Call the law, Yahweh by Shalom Shai, by Shalom Kakodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be light unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Aquas that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm I from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming at you with another lesson in truth. I'm going to be reading from uh, the Oxford Anointed Bible with the Apocrypha. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's a study Bible, which is very revealing and very good information. And I've been watching this show called Midnight Mass. Um, and it's actually been pretty interesting. And it just told you, and it just told you to show you the wickedness of, of the, uh, the Catholic Church. It is, it is beyond wicked. And um, there's nothing holy or righteous about it. That's why they help push the, the social science and the, you know, and, you know and, and everything else that they do um, that's against the Bible. And, you know, and it's funny how the, the, the priest in this is quoting scriptures. They've got nothing to do with the masses of people. It only has to do with the children of Israel. And this scene, uh, I turned down the sound. Also, before I even begin, let me, uh, let me pull this up. I want to read something for uh, YouTube. I already cut a video in the midst of my recording it earlier, but this is a copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing, so I'm uh, profiting from this nothing. I'm making zero profit from this. I do not own this. I'm using it for the purpose of educational and informational uses only. And um, I'll only be using a few seconds of it. And I will not be using sound. But this is a portion when she says that she's describing how her mother is, is using the, uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, which is the book of Lamentations, as an example of herself. And what does the destruction of Jerusalem have to do with any other nation except for the, the, the nation of Israel, which makes up the 12 tribes of Israel? All right, which which is one gigantic nation yet twelve separate nations. All right, so uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, let's just let her let it play. And you, the caption is on. That's what she said. A special kind of self-pity to identify with the destruction of Jerusalem. Well, there's 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 some very important information in, in, in the book of Lamentations, as in all the Bible, um, especially in the in the fourth chapter, because it identifies the destruction of Jerusalem was done by the Edomites. Yet you have scholars who say the Edomites were done away with. All right, and yet provide no evidence, no proof, no time frame, no relics uh, to prove that point. Neither, neither just you know how you can't find the relics of Israel being put on slave ships, uh, the Israelis that is, um, were, were being put on slave ships and carted around the four corners of the earth and being sold to uh, you know to the slave markets. There is no relics and no evidence of that. Um, they never went through that because they're not the people. All right? That's why they try to dock up scriptures, especially in Deuteronomy 20 and 68. They try to see you offer yourselves as slaves, but no one shall buy. So if you offer yourself as... So how are you going to... So if I'm offering myself as a slave, I want you to listen to how ludicrous is that sound. I'm offering myself as a slave, but no one will buy me. Well, are they going to pay me and then make me a slave? I'm going to be a slave plus get... Paid. You, 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 how ridiculous is that? All right, when the slave standing out on, on the slave block is actually receiving the payment for himself. What kind of retardation is that? But anyway, this is the, uh, in that very set book, 
in the Oxford Anointed Bible with the Apocrypha Expanded Edition. And this is from 1934, I believe, this book. 32. They're definitely the 30s. It says, uh, and this is the uh, opening statement, you know, that's before the pre the prelogue or the prologue before the uh before the chapter starts, and it says, Lamentation is a small sculpture and communal, see, commu within the community, laments over Jerusalem. For its destruction by the Babylonians in 587, these these songs have been traditionally ascribed to Jeremiah because of and then it gets 2 Chronicles 35, 20, uh, 35, 25. But those laments were for the death of uh, Josiah, not for the destruction of Jerusalem. The thought of diction are sufficiently unlike Jeremiah to make his authorship unlikely. The first four chapters of the al alphabet uh, acrostics with a stanza for each of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. See? And that proves that the E, the V, the O and the U are not a part that is Shittish. All right? That is the, what they added unto it. So the language is bastardized. Okay? <clears throat> so there's only 22 letters. The only long vowel sound in Hebrew is the I sound. There is no E. There is no V. That f, f, f sound that they, they use. There's no U. There's no O. All right? It says, were all composed or adapted for public recitation on the days of fasting, uh, mourning, notably that the 9th of, the, of, of, of Ab, August, which, and see now there's the Ab because, you know, August, that's, that's the Greek influence, all right, memorated the disaster of, um, it says chapters 1 and 2 and 4 formed Dirges over the dead city, alleges limping, meter, three beats followed by two beats, is recognized even in translation, together with the exclamation how, in the opening line, it expresses the grief, the sadness, and it gives a bunch of scriptures, I'm not going to call them, the sadness of the desolate people and the reflection upon the meaning of the disaster are voiced by an individual, all right? Its form language recalls the, the liturgies for use in time of national trouble, such as the common theme of all the poems of agony of the people, apparent desertion of Zion by her, by her God, and the hope that God will yet restore the humble and repentant Israel. Lamentations may be the work of several authors speaking of the dreadful situation inhabitants of Jerusalem, following the overthrow of the city. So now let's go to Lamentations, the fourth chapter. And um, and two things that stand out is that here when you get to the verse 8, this is one of my favorite uh, 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 verses in the whole Bible because it breaks down the physical appearance, the visage when you're looking at a Jew or, or, or any of the, uh, the, uh, the 12 tribes at that time for the most part, all right? Even though they weren't intermixing with the people around them already. Northern Kingdom was in a mix with Ammon and Moab, which is why a lot of them have those slanty eyes to this day. All right. But uh, but nevertheless, it says now their visage is blacker than soot. They are not recognized in the street. Their skin is shriveled upon their bones. It has become as dry as wood. So they were there's you, you, Jake get ashy. You know how Jake get ashy They get kind of. They, they get that, that white, like, film over their skin, but yet the skin underneath is very dark. So it just described the physical appearance of a Jew. Yet you still got people who want to push this Israeli lie, okay? And when you look up the definition of Israeli, it tells you that, that it is a modern citizen of Israel, not to be confused with the ancient Israelites, all right? Now in that same said chapter, you jump up to verse... Uh, 21 and it reads oh, I mean 3 I need to be in 4 I went back to my 4 this is Lamentation uh, 4 and 21 and it, reads, and, it, and it reads rejoice and be glad O daughter of Edom see Edom had a lot to do with the destruction okay they played a role alright and, and who 
who sacked uh, 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 Jerusalem, Rome. So that lines up with the book, uh, The Kingdom of the Edomite, 1853, by, uh, oh, I forget his name now, that it proves that the Romans were indeed Edomites, okay? It says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, dweller, uh, dweller in the land of Uz. He reads a little bit differently from the King James. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, dweller in the land of Uz. But, but to you also the cup shall pass. You shall become drunk and strip yourself bare. The punishment of your iniquity, O daughter of Zion, is accomplished. He will keep you in exile. And just like it says, O daughter of Zion, the same way it says about the daughter of Babylon. So it's talking about their descendants in the future. All right? O daughter of Edom, he will punish you. He will uncover your sin. So Edom is revealed. His kingdom is falling apart. He is exposed and he is a liar. A murderer and a... Uh, call Halal Yahweh Bashan Abishai Bashan Rakaq Badash Wa Ababa Ball Kwam Yasharala Alright. Shalom before I begin this video. <clears throat> I want to say all praise, honor, and glory goes into Yahweh Bahashim. Yahweh Shai Bahashem Ha Rekakwadash. Alright. The name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. In the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Right? In the name of the Holy Spirit, the Rekakwadash, man. <clears throat> so that was the beloved elder brother, Malcolm, the head of the uh, Chicago camp, Great Millstone, Chicago. Uh, he has two. Uh, two or more pages. Uh, this one being GMS Maccabean Spirit Ba. He also has one called uh, GMS Maccabean Spirit. And he also has one called Malcolm. So subscribe to those, you know, and be edified, man. <clears throat> but what he was going into is the wickedness of this Christianism, man. This, this, and see, it is um, like how they like to say uh, Hebrew Israelism, right? They try to add, a, um, they try to make it extra. It seems like it is some sort of um, ridiculous thing. When in reality, really, that's you Christians, all right? Now the real Christians, obviously, are the children of are the children of Israel, with the understanding, because you know. Christ, right, goes back to anointed. So who's who's the ones that are really anointed? All right, the hopeful elect. So we're the real Christians, but they just like everything, they hijack it. <clears throat> but he was going into um, show that he's been watching. Uh, it's called Midnight Mass. I haven't watched it myself, um, but it, it. I mean. Well, everybody knows what a midnight mass is, you know. That's basically when you devils gather around and y'all have y'all's uh, satanic church. Y'all do all your wicked, all your wicked shit that you do. All right. But but every day is a damn midnight mass for you devils. You go, you going all out with it. All right. But it's important to understand that what we're doing is is being a thorn in Esau's side, man. See, because this, this devil is having a hard time facing the reality, Salakia, facing the reality of this truth. This truth is fucking him up. <clears throat> now, a lot of people, they don't even know that, you know, we profess to be the children of Israel. And they're fucked up just by your appearance. It happens to me every day. Demon will hop on, you know. These heathens. They'll be looking at you weird. Or they may look in awe, you know. Because Lord's will, we have that, you know, that, um, that covering. That anointing. Okay. Because when you, when you, um, Anoint yourself with oil that 
that protects you. You know, when you put on some lotion, that's supposed to protect you, you know, from your skin cracking or whatnot. And that was a very good um, point that the elder brother made about how our skin gets, um, like, dry. You know what I mean? I got to go back and uh, I got to go back and write that one down. <clears throat> write that precept down because that, that one, that's, that's, I've never heard that one before. And you, you know, you always hear something new uh, every day. And it's truth, man. You're always going to learn something new. So that was something new that I learned today. That we can go in the scriptures and literally it'll describe, you know, our skin. You know, because Jake get ashy. I know I get ashy. You know. <clears throat> Anyways, let me just get a uh, precept. I was so <laughs> I was so busy about to play the video I forgot to get my own. All right, so this is Job chapter nine verse twenty four. Uh, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who's the wicked? The self proclaimed white man, whoever whoever the fuck that is, man. Hey, we get tired of hearing that. <clears throat> I know me personally, I get tired of hearing black white. Because upon coming in this truth, you know, prior to coming into this truth, that's all you know, black, white, Chinese, Japanese, right? It's not until the Lord reveals that there are 18 nations here upon the earth. It's not until then that you, that you realize that, hey, man, black, white, these other things, these are just constructs. These are just uh, colors. And and going back to what the elder brother was uh, making his lesson off of, it's all based off of deception, right? A black even the black black mass is is based off of deception. See, because Satan's job is to deceive these people. Satan's job is to deceive us also. Chiefly, really, really, ultimately, Satan's main job is to um. Is to, is to basically be a thorn in the hopeful elect side. Now he now he is used to you know, uh, uh, you know wreak havoc upon the earth, and and you know he is within these so-called white people. The spiritual demon Satan has a physical counterpart, which is the self-proclaimed white man. You can now you can argue that with whatever man. It don't matter. We know, see all the things that we're talking about. We know it is facts, due to it being in the scriptures, man. Okay. <clears throat> the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. So yeah, uh, when you think of an angel, what do you think of? In reality, <laughs> when you, when you think of an angel, it's the exact opposite of the truth. Okay, an, uh, an actual angel, and even though an angel can, an angel can come in in, in different um, uh, uh, forms, so to speak. They can look different, but for the most part, an angel appears to be a so-called black man. But when you ask any ask anybody to describe what an angel looks like. And they're going to tell you that uh, an angel looks like a self-proclaimed white woman. Which is the exact opposite. <clears throat> and these these guys are known to do shit in an opposite fashion. That's just how they get down, man. This is the damn devil we talking about. <clears throat> Salakia. How do we know that the earth is given into the hand of a wicked man? We got fucking GMOs out here that spraying stuff in the air. You know, my my allergies are just going crazy, man. And and why is that, man? You got you got dust out here. You got fucking dandruff. 
You got fucking and you so called white people, you take your dogs everywhere. You know what I mean? You I mean you some of the main people that when you think about it, when you go to their house, it's just fucking dusty. You know, especially you older, you older devils. But speaking about you older devils, man, it's dust everywhere, man. Just a base animal. Alright, and we getting tired of looking at you. <clears throat> okay. And pretty soon we're not gonna have to look at you, man. You're gonna be a thing of the past. I'm sitting here uh, looking at an eating my chicken in a truck, man, just with some shades on. You know, just chilling. Not a care in the world. Why? Alright, because the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. She's the fucking wicked. So right now, this is her current kingdom, her current rulership. But the times to come, brothers, we're not going to have no allergies. We're not going to have no, no, you know what I mean, no headaches and things like that. You know, and it, and it, and it bothers you, man, to think that, that, that these people, these motherfuckers are in authority. You know, and excuse my language, but, the, you know. These are the people that rule over us, man. And you niggas are happy about it. Two-thirds of Israel, you're happy about the so-called white man ruling over you. Which is sad. It's absolutely sad. All right. It says, uh, as, uh, uh, as I continue, he covered the faces of the judges thereof. So who are the judges? The children of Israel. More specifically, the hopeful elect. Men of Israel. Uh, it says, if not, where and who is he? So if the self if the self proclaimed white man isn't the wicked, then who's the wicked? Right? And and the answer that a lot of people give is, Well, we're all wicked. Okay. Which that's true to a fault, but who who is the wicked? Who is the premier wicked? There can only, there really, when you think about it, it can only be one premier wicked. Because, you know, you got you got Jake, Jake do the most, you know. But when it comes down to being wicked, we already know who the number one wicked person on the planet is. It is, it is a self-proclaimed white man, and we have plenty of, of uh, scriptures to prove that. All right, but that's a whole, that's a whole nother lesson, man. Lock <laughs> Verse 25. Now my days are swifter than a post. They flee away. They see no good. All right, so we, we can't even live in this place without being vexed, man. You, cause, cause in the ancient times, you, Jake didn't have no damn allergies. Jake didn't have a gluten allergy. Jake didn't have, you know what I mean. Jake didn't have ADHD and and, and all this other stuff. That was not even a thing, man. <clears throat> Now look, now look at Jake. Jake all over the damn place. Alright. Anyways, uh, it says. Verse 26. They are passed away as the swift ships. As the eagle that hasteth to the prey. Alright, so. so, And an and eagle is a predatory animal. So this giant. This giant. <laughs> This giant eagle, basically a representation of America, and, and a representation of Rome, and really E in general, you know. Really, no other na no other nation uh, uh, can be described like a, like an eagle, because an eagle is actually a very uh, a ferocious animal, man. A, ba a, a a bald eagle, a fully grown adult bald eagle. Uh, can ki can kill somebody, you know what I mean? All it would have to do is literally get its talons around your neck, and boom, you're out of here. 
<clears throat> so this e and this eagle is uh, this eagle's tearing Jake up, man. Jake constantly getting tore up by this eagle. Yet you know they love the eagle. They pay homage to the eagle. They give tribute to the eagle. You know, a lot of times when people um. <laughs> Uh, you know, people have the American flag, and it's got the it's got the eagle on, on the top of it. They usually put a golden eagle on top of the flag, and they and they hoist it. You know, and everybody stops and they take their hats off and they put the hand over their heart. You know, certain people even bow before the flag, man. You know. So we're not supposed to be doing that. And that's the spirit because um, growing up, uh, when I was younger, um, they used to uh, ha have us say the Pledge of the pledge of Allegiance in school every morning. And the spirit on me was just like, nah, man, like, what the fuck? Like, this place ain't fair. And I remember kind of mouthing it, like making it look like I was saying it. But I never said it. And, you know, especially the ending. And, and, and the crazy part is, in your youth, you say this so many times that even as an adult, you rem you remember it. Because I haven't, you know, unless you, you know, go to some sort of uh, event as a young kid or as a teenager. As an adult, I haven't had to say the Pledge of Allegiance, you know? But I still know it to this day, all right? And how does it go? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right? And that's, so, and that's something that has been put, that vibration has been pushed. That's something that has been pushed. How how do I in my late twenties still know that? I I repeated that over and over and over and over again, hundreds of times, to the point where subconsciously it's in your it's in your mind now. If somebody says, "Okay, say the Pledge of Allegiance," a good percentage of older people, man, <clears throat> are still gonna be able to um recite that, man. And that's, you know, that's, that's, that's far out to think about that E not only attacks you physically, spiritually, you know, but your, your subconscious, man, he attack he attacks your subconscious. That's something that you got to subliminally put in a child's head over and over and over again. But the important part is the end. That's what seals the deal. Right, and two republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there justice for all? Hell no. Right? Is the Lord is the Lord uh, indivisible in, in the fact that the Lord doesn't want to cause division? You got your mind. So basically, the whole the whole pledge is bullshit. That's the conclusion of the matter. That. This, and who are you? Who are you pledging allegiance to? Right. Ultimately, ultimately, uh, Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed white man. And what spirit is within him? All right, Satan. So ultimately, you're making a pledge to Satan. You're making a pledge to the so-called white man. Uh, that basically you you just gonna be a good slave in America. <clears throat> I mean, that's really all it is when it comes down to it, man. So we have to find ourselves on the inside looking out as far as this strong tower. And the name of the Lord is, is, is a strong tower, man. Let's get that. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. 
So we were told, hey, you know, the name of the Lord is powerful. Okay? It is almighty. So by running into by running into this tower, we can be safe. We can be protected, man. Alright, but what does Christianism uh teach you? Oh well, well the name of the Lord doesn't matter. How he looks doesn't matter. We're just all one nation. We're all we're you know, we're all God's children. There's no difference. You know, and if that's the case then how come uh the uh, uh the economic status of Jake isn't equal to uh Esau and these other nations, man. Which the spirit has been on me lately to just uh uh to just say his name outright, man. Because <clears throat> you are you you so called white people you are the Edomites there is no and there really ain't no um hiding it y'all are the ones who should be hiding it and should be ashamed we're just bring we're just bringing that out that's just something that we bringing out we got to tell you that we got to let you know man you know and that's part of our job too is to let you know. What's taking place? You know, and what part of what's taking place is the revelation of who of who who your house shy is, who the twelve tribes of Israel are, who you other nations are, and who the self proclaimed white man is. Right? And the in and the ending, right, is, is going to be our Lord coming back with the angels and fucking you up. And Jake getting jacked up. Alright, it says <clears throat> Slock you. Verse 11 The rich man's wealth is his strong city. Yeah, so, you know, you're going to have all these elite. They're going to be trying to buy submarines and, you know, spacecraft and all this. It's not going to work. You're wasting your time. All right. And it says. And as in high wall in his own conceit. <laughs> so, you know, Esau conceited. And they got this one song. I can't remember who sings it. <laughs> some sort of Judite, some sort of Judite woman. Uh, it may be Lil' Kim. I, I think it is. I, don't quote me on that. But the song uh, it goes, uh, I'm conceited. I got a reason. That's really, that's Esau. That's your so-called white people, you know. You conceded and you got a reason. Why is it? Because you're the damn devil. That's why. <clears throat> you and, and another thing, man, I'm just saying this through the spirit. Uh, you so-called white people, you're losing your mind too, man. You're losing it. Like, you're just off your rocker. I'm, I was speaking to my so-called woman. And, uh, I was in I was I was in the break room at my job and uh, everybody was just bugging out. Everybody's just acting, you know, just bugging out, and I'm off separate on the side eating my food, just quiet. And everybody else bugging out and talking about all sorts of all sorts of bugged out shit. And uh, you know, I told the chick I deal with, I said, you know, uh, f sometimes when I'm sitting in the break room or I'm out in the world, uh, you know, I feel like I'm in a in a in a fucking psych ward. You know what I mean? Like it's it's <laughs> these people are these people are fucking nuts. You don't want to be around most of these people, man. That's a conclusion that you come to when you in this when you in this truth. You don't want to be around most people because I literally wanted to I literally wanted to get up and just walk out, man. But I had I had to finish my lunch. You know, I was watching a lesson, you know, on the phone. But you, you just want to get up and you you want to you want to just go home, man. Because it's like, man, I, I don't want to be around y'all. And that's the point that he's getting to. That's why Lord's will, they uh, do push these mandatory, um, ju the mandatory juicy juice. You know, they need to push that. Cause we honestly we not trying to, we not trying to go to work, and be amongst these people. Not really because we you know, oh oh we hate we hate working. 
Or, or we can't, we don't have the ability to do it. We, we, Jake has the ability to do it. But it's simply the fact that you're surrounded by bug outs all damn day, man. <clears throat> That's what I can't get down with. And the most bugged out is Jake. <clears throat> but I work with a lot of devils, too. You know? <clears throat> Verse 12, oh, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. So that, that those are polar opposites. All right, so you have haughty, and then you have humility. So destruction is coming for the haughty. Two-thirds of Israel, you are the nations, uh, and the self-proclaimed white man. And wh who is honor coming for? Honor is coming for the so-called Negro, the so-called Latino, so-called Native American so-called West Indian and Haitians and you spe uh, and you speckle birds man <clears throat> all right but more specifically the 144,000 and the one-thirds all right but in reality it's speaking about the men you know now the women are gonna be saved and be you know and be blessed from being saved but ultimately that honor that 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 nobility that crown is coming to uh, uh, the Israelite man who's found as the elect. Okay, so we have to understand that hey, we are kings in the making. You know, our sons are our sons are gonna be princes in the in the making. You know, our daughters are princesses in the making. Okay, so we we have to be aware of that, man. That we we, we are on our way. We we are royalty right now, you know, as as we as, as we live, but we are going to be recognized as as the royalty that we are in the kingdom, man. Right, so right now we have to be, uh, we have to have a sense of humility. And what does the word humility go back to? Humiliate, humil humiliation. You know. So we, we got to be humiliated, man. You know? We got to we gotta go. We got to go through some shit. We got to. You know, we got to really. We got to. We got to really be humiliated. And, 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 and submit ourselves. And hum, humble ourselves down, man. In, in order to be uh, recognized. Okay. Verse 13, he that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. And that's being in the spirit of a woman. That argumentative, I know what you're about to say before you say it, spirit. <clears throat> that's Esau, too. Uh, before you even get a chance to answer a matter, he always, he always got an answer, man. It's a fucking demon. And once, and once again, you know, you, you go to work. You may have, like, I got, I got this one uh, damn devil that I work with. He's he's about the same age as me, but you can just tell. He, you can tell that he's the damn devil. It's it's plain as day to see, you know. And the thing about the devil, a lot of you devils, you just flat out. Just uh, a, a Thor, uh, you think you got some sort of. Uh, authority and it don't and it don't work with Jake. That's why that's why Jake checks shit at the door. Jake not having it. You know you you get to talking uh, crazy to Jacob and, and he going he gonna show you better than he could tell you. And that's just what it is. <clears throat> and that's why we have to sh we have to shut it down and we got to shut him down. Soon soon as you other nations start talking shit, y'all are heathens. Y'all are below us. All right, so it's no reason for us to be arguing, arguing with a damn heathen or none of that. We ain't going to be going back and forth with two other nations in the kingdom. <laughs> you already know what time it is, man. You're going to you gonna have to bow. Point blank. At all times, man, you, you're going to have to bow. You, man, your back going to be hurting. You got to bow so damn much. All right. We're going to tell you to bow lower. Shit. 
you know, because we'll be able to do that in that day, man. Verse 14, the spirit of a man will sustain his affirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? Yeah, man, so we don't want a wounded spirit, which comes as plagues of the mind, you know, plagues of the spirit, you know, losing faith. Nah, man, we want to have that faith. 